Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to go over the slider component. The slider component is an alternative to the grabber component and it has some more unique properties that make it useful, sort of useful in certain scenarios. Let's go over it. Uh, it's quite a complicated component as it's uh, more complicated than the usual grabbable, but uh, I'll take you through the parts that uh, I use. So I'm going to go ahead and spawn out a uh, dev tooltip equip it and I'm going to start with always a box, three model box. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit, inspect it, and we're going to scroll down on the component list to the grabbable. And we're just going to delete it because we won't need that today. And then we're going to go to attach component, transform interaction slider. And this way you'll see the slider has a lot more options than the grabbable. Check the grabbable video. I will link that below in the video description. Um, the first things you can see are that... Uh, other than there being a lot of uh, options, we'll get to those in just a moment. Let me show you first of all what it looks like in the world. So you'll see here when I pick it up that it operates much like um, a regular uh, grabbable. I can't rotate it using the joystick. I also cannot rotate it currently using the um, hand as well. So when I go up to it and put my hand into it, and that's because we have um, rotatable set to off and scalable is also set to off, so we can't scale it either. Um, let's go over the options. Uh, so on the options here, you can see uh, edit mode only, um, which uh, allows you to only slide it when it's in it, when you're in edit mode. Allow steal is similar to the allow steal on grabbable in that uh, it allows other people to pick it up whilst you're holding it. Drop on disable is the same as the grabbable drop on disable, which means you'll let go of it when uh, it's disabled the component uh, slider. Don't drive is a setting which um, will prevent the slider from actually driving the um, the coordinates. I'll have to show that one off. So if I um, leave don't drive off and we scroll to the top of the box and I pick it up, you'll see that whilst I have it in my hand, the position is being driven as in it's pink up at the top here. And then when I let go, it becomes unpink. But if I check don't drive and then we scroll back up to the top and I pick this up, you'll see here that the position is being um, changed a different manner. I'm not entirely sure which manner it's using, but probably similar to, to rights or something like that. Um, so here it's not pink at the top here, it's uh, white, which means that you could influence its position in addition to a user holding it. That's don't drive for you. Beneath that is active user filter. That is similar to the um, grabbable active user filter, except there's no um, direct user list that can and can't grab it, so you have to use the active user filter if you want to do anything like that. Again, that works by saying, is this parented to a user? If it's parented to a user, then the active user filter applies. On disabled, it does nothing. On exclude active user, it prevents the um, active users and the user it's been parented to from uh, sliding it. Active user when present will mean that if there is an active user present, as in if it's parented to someone, only that person can pick it up and slide it around. Only active user is only the active user. And then back disabled. Beneath that, there is a bunch of underscore slots. Um, these will get set to various values when you pick it up. Don't set them manually. They are um, internal properties, really. Whenever you see underscore, you should really think uh, twice about whether you should be accessing that property or using that property, because underscore means it's sort of private and you shouldn't really be looking at it. Um, so we'll skip all the underscores down to physical. That means it can only be slid physically, as in when I walk up to it. So now it won't be laserable. You have, you have to walk up to it and grab it. Um, grab priorities we talk about in the grabbable video. That's basically if there are two objects that are grabbable or slidable um, within range of your grab, which one should it pick up? Uh, the one with the highest grab priority wins. Rotatable makes it rotatable. So now I can rotate the thing. Um, it doesn't have the preserve up that the grabbable has. So you'll notice that I can rotate it freely. Um, if there was a preserve up option, then it would rotate exactly how the grabbables do. Scalable allows you to scale it. Now is where the interesting um, slider specific stuff comes in. You'll see here that there is a range property and that right now this is set on X, Y, and Z to a very high number. Uh, I'll say it again, uh, I say it every time this comes up, the E plus 38 is scientific notation. And what this means effectively is 3.40 times 10 to the power of 38, which is about the maximum value of the data type that is being used for the X, Y, and Z range. You shouldn't have to worry about it. If you leave it to this value, you can just grab it and slide it wherever you want to. However, if you start editing this, so if we drop this back down to zero, for example, now I can't move it on the X axis. So I can move it up and down, which is the Y axis, and forwards and back, which is the 
z-axis, but I can't move it left and right, which is the x-axis. This is where it starts being called slider, you know, rather than grabber. Like, I, I can slide this around, but I don't have freedom about it. If I were to drop the range to zero on the z-axis as well, you'll see I can now only make it go up and down. I can't make it go left and right. And if I set it to zero on all of them, then it will get stuck at its origin point. It won't move at all. I could also set this to a number. So if I set this to 10, you'll see it can only go 10 units up and it's stopping there, even though I'm pushing it further. And I can drag it down and push it into the floor, but it will stop at the bottom there because that's 10. I'm going to set that to a lower number here so we can see that working. Let's do two. So now you can see I can move it up to there and down to about there, but no further. Uh, origin is just the origin of where the object started off in its life. Um, the vibration settings control how it feels when you pick it up. So if you do uh, short, my controllers are buzzing with a short buzz when I pick it up. If I do medium, that will be medium and long will do long. Snaps are um, a little bit hard to show with this setup. So I have something set up here that you'll also find in my um, tutorials public folder. So if you go to public probable prime, which I'll just show you. Um, so we're in my public folder, we go to tutorials and then it's the new one here, slidey box, that's what it's called. So the slidey box here, you'll see um, I can slide it between the red cube and the green cube, and the center of the object can go between the red and green cube, and you'll see it kind of slides really fast. But the other thing it will do is it will snap, um, and that's because I've got snapping set up. So I'm going to inspect this cube and show you how I've got that working. So grab the cube, inspect it, and then we'll scroll down to the bottom where the slider is, and you'll see here I have snap position set. And the snap positions here are the positions of the red box and the green box relative to the object space that it's in. So if I go up one, you'll see that the start box here is at negative 2.5 on the X because this is local positioning. And the end box is at 2.5 or positive 2.5. So we go between negative 2.5 and positive 2.5 on the X. You'll also see here that I've got the range set to 5, which means it can't go up and down. It can only go between um, negative 2.5 and positive 2.5, because when you set a range, it is positive and negative inclusive, so forwards and backwards. Then you'll see beneath that I have snap increments set up. Snap increments mean that it will align itself to a um, more definable value when you change it. So you see here I'm at 0. Point a random number, you'll see it snapped back to 0 0.3. If I move it close to 0 0.6, you'll see it snapped back to 0 0.6. So it's almost like rounding, but not really, because you're changing the physical location of that object, but it um, it lets you use it uh, as a more sort of discrete value. Um, snap on release means that it will snap to those. Snap time is how long it takes to snap to them. On the snap positions here, you are setting um, the position it snaps to, but the max distance is how far away from that point it can be before it starts trying to snap to it. I've set that to one uh, play around of it really, but you'll see if I go almost quite uh, almost close to the box, but also still quite far away, it'll still snap to it. And that's because that's that max distance is quite high. So that's snapping for you. Um, I'm going to explain now what I believe the slider is meant for, um, among other things. I mean, you can use anything for everything, but uh, the the snapping and the rounding, etc., have, have made it sort of. You know, I was thinking about it. I could use it as an actual slider for some UI, and that's what this is built to sort of set up. I can change a value. Let's say the pink value drives something between negative 2.5 and positive 2.5. Um, but I'm using the uh, box here to represent that value. So that's one example of something you could use it for. I could tie the X position here to be the, the value that the slider represents. So say I wanted to set, I don't know, let's say volume to 2.5, I would move the pink cube to the red, uh, to the green cube. If I wanted to set volume to negative 2.5, I could move it back to the, the red cube. So that's, that's what the, um, the, the way I have it set up, but uh, you'll see it in use in, in other cases um, that aren't that. I just thought that that lined up with the actual name of it, Slider. Uh, for example, if you were to go to the developer tooltip and do create new object Neos UI Slider, you'll see a similar setup to the one I have here, 
rendered in the um, bevel um, UI here where I can slide between the left and right and this outputs a value. So it's just another example of that. You will see it um, throughout the world sometimes. Um, a good example that I can think of is if you go inside Neos Essentials here um, and you spawn out the plate here that shows active sessions, this is a slider and that's because you can't rotate it. So if we inspect the um, plate here, you'll see slider. Uh, you'll notice them in other places. I believe I put this in my public folder. I am not sure if I did. If I didn't, I will put it there later. Uh, let's just find it. Here it is. So this I made um, to illustrate, you know, which way was X, which way was Y, etc. And uh, it's on a slider too. This is a particularly old version of it, but I can't rotate this because it's on a slider, which means that like it's always facing in roughly the right direction. Um, I can make it go wrong because it's not absolute. Uh, I think I made an up-to-date version that was absolute, but it's just another example of a slider being used. The next time you want to restrict a grabbable, uh, think about using a slider. Next time you want to kind of track like this or to constrain a grabbable in a certain direction, again, think about trying a slider out. You can find this in my public folder to play around with it, and you can find the session joiner in the Neos Essentials folder. I believe that's it for Slider. If you have any more questions about Slider, do let me know. I will link the videos to Grabbable below as well so you can compare the difference. I will see you next time.